You may have already heard that the pandemic recovery in many parts of the world is warping global supply chains. The latest evidence? Container ships are backing up at ports worldwide. A global surge in demand has put more ships underway, more than on-the-ground labor and downstream logistics can handle. Another factor? The continuing logjam from the Ever, Ever Given. That's the ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal in March. Now take a look at this. The number of containers held in Europe's largest port, Rotterdam, rose by 9% in the first half of 2021 compared to the previous year. Now the somewhat smaller ports of Antwerp and Hamburg have also seen significant backlogs rise. Now the delay in processing is causing headaches for importers and shippers alike, and it means that shipping prices are rising and the containers have become harder to find. Now, for more on this, we go to our financial correspondent, Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt. Uh, Chelsea, we just had a quick look there at the container backlog itself, what it means for the ports, what they're seeing. What about the latest industrial data? Aren't we already seeing some signs of this kind of backlog and what it's doing to Europe's economy? Definitely. This has been a very uh, data-heavy week for the European economy, and to be perfectly frank, it's all been quite disappointing. Um, just one example, we saw industrial orders, which is important because it shows how busy factories are going to be in the coming months. Those were down about 8 percent, so these supply chain issues are becoming more serious, and we've sort of entered this new stage where a lot of different issues are uh, converging. So you have not just things like a semiconductor shortage that we seen all year. We're also now seeing natural gas and broader energy shortages. We're seeing uh, these shortages of commodities like steel and wheat and lumber. And to add on top of that, now we've got congestion at European ports. So all of this raises the risk that we get this toxic mix of both inflation from these constraints and lower production and economic growth. Chelsea, what does this mean downstream from these ports as we look at the retailers who are so dependent on getting these products? What does it mean for Christmas? Yeah, I hate to be the Grinch here, but it does look like it's going to be a bit of a difficult Christmas, especially for, for shoppers and consumers. We are hearing more and more from retailers, from supermarkets, that uh, that they're having trouble getting products and that we could see shortages. We've heard this from supermarkets here in Germany over the past couple of days. They say uh, things like pasta or potatoes or meat could be in short supply quite quickly. Uh, as well, there are a lot of um, goods that are still stuck in Asia, so toys, a electronics, all of these uh, things that people might be wanting to buy in the Christmas season, uh, it's possible that they may not get here in time. So some big retailers are looking at other options. They're looking at flying goods over. They're looking at uh, moving production to other facilities, for example, closer to them in, in, in Latin America. Um, but this is something that's going to last a long time, and, and we likely will see less supply and more expensive goods in this winter. All right. DW Financial Correspondent Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt. Thank you very much. Right, Chelsea touched on this a little bit, but with ports tied up, why can't companies just ship over land? Well, many are trying to do just that. And now demand for truck drivers is rising quickly. Now, it's a problem that's especially pronounced in the UK, but it's hitting continental Europe as well. Yaroslav Fenik has been driving trucks for 15 years. Not an easy job. There is a lot of stress all the time, lots of traffic. Many people don't behave very nicely. You lose a lot of time at work, and we work every day, 12, 13, and sometimes 15 hours. Based in Belgium, he hauls freight all over Europe. Demand for workers like him has gone up over the years, and so have the challenges he faces. Many things have to change, firstly parking. Then we have a tachograph which records driving time and the fines are very high if we break the rules. If I don't find a place to sleep, my driving time goes up and that's a big problem. Across the channel in the UK, a massive shortage of drivers has been straining supply chains. The pandemic and Brexit caused many EU drivers to leave. To try and lure them back, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson promised special visas, initially valid till Christmas, now extended to next March. Dutch trade unionist Edwin Atema says that's not nearly enough. Actually, they're laughing. Like, do they really think that we quit our EU job to help the UK until Christmas Eve? Yeah, that's short-term solution, which is no solution. 
A veteran trucker himself, Artema is critical of the industry in the UK, but also the EU, where large sections of the trade rely on cheap labour from Eastern Europe. In Western Europe, European laws are not enforced, which allows that workers are exploited. These exploited workers fill up the gaps in the supply chain, which cannot be happen uh, uh, in the UK in a moment. Some fear that down the line, continental Europe may also end up with gaps that cannot be filled. Even trucking companies with better working conditions already struggle to recruit. We got trucks, we got trailers, we got jobs, but we don't find the drivers. With shortens of drivers, the prices will be higher because everybody wants to be served and then the risk is there that quality will fall down. Britain's crisis could lead to improved working conditions for drivers there. Salaries have already gone up. But Jaroslav Fenik thinks it will take more than that to draw EU drivers back. The offer would have to be super extra mega good to make it interesting. And at least for the moment, it is not. All right, Lars Greiner is associate partner at Hamburg Port Consulting. He joins me now for more on these supply shortages that we're seeing, these logistic challenges. Lars, good to have you on the show. We just saw a piece about shortages in truck drivers there. Uh, part of that is the pandemic. Part of that appears to be how many people were in the pipeline to have training as a truck driver. You work at the port, the Hamburg port. Your ports, ports are your main focus. What is the holdup there that you guys are seeing? Where is the, 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 the pinch point for what you're seeing there? I, I think in general, it, 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 it's you could almost say it's almost like the perfect storm. Um, yes, the, the the pandemic has the pandemic, sorry, has been a a catalyst for pro issues and problems that were developing already. And what we see now is it's catalyzed a lot of issues, um, four ma four main issues, but a whole lot of issues at the same time. Um, it's catalyzed the fact that you know container flows were because when the volumes were down, people were able to, the the lines were able to control the container flows a bit better. So we've now we've now got a re, we've now got container imbalances have come back in which weren't there. Um, it's it's it, the the ports have have were always teetering on the on the edge of congestion. We've now we've now seen a lot of con um, congestion in in the major ports, particularly in the United States and and starting in China again, um, and that and. That's led to a reduced number of vessels being available. At the same time, during the pandemic, the, a lot of owners took the chance to refurbish vessels or even take some older vessels out of service. So at the moment, we've got fewer vessels on the market that they than they would have been at the beginning of, mm. of COVID. And then finally, and then finally, the pandemic has has really just changed the flow of goods. Um, you know, people are buying a lot more online now. People are looking at different things to what they were buying before. Um, there's a lot more consumer goods being bought as when, when people can't travel. So these have all added to a, to a problem that was there already. Lars, um, what does that mean for what does that mean for companies? What does that mean for the companies themselves? What kind of delays are they seeing? Um, in, in, in terms of delays, I couldn't give you firm, num firm numbers at the moment. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's again, the pandemic is still causing fluctuations. You know, you've seen a situation in, in Vietnam where factories were, were closed for, for, I think it was seven weeks, and a few factories remained open with people staying there. Um, but their production is just down as well. Uh, I couldn't really give you numbers of, of, of what it means for them, but what it means for them is they need to relook at their supply chain, um, how they're producing. And and how they will produce into the future, um, but doing that in a market where they're not as sure where they're not sure what the future really is at the moment. Uh, Lars, briefly, um, one um, of the things. Real quick, is, when will this get better? Do you have any idea? Briefly, if you could. To be honest, there's no real short-term solution for this. Um, you speak to the, uh, most people, and they say this is going to go well into 2022, um, potentially into 2023. There are so many factors at the moment that could determine it. I think what we're really seeing is which we're seeing the changing of the supply chain to a more digitalized supply chain. And I think the solution, coming back to your truck drivers again, um, the, the, one of the reasons why, why there are less truck drivers available is everyone's waiting for the movement towards automation in that regard. So it's not an attractive um, mm. career with a, with a real future in it. It's a very good um, point. So I think what we... What, what we're going to see now is we're going to see the, the push towards a more digitalized economy. And only when we see that really starting to come in All will right. we see the summer relief starting to happen. And we'll have to leave it there. Lars Greiner with Hamburg Port Consulting. Thank you as always. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good day.